Welcome. Uh, this is our second webinar for today. We're doing the same topics we did uh, last time and also earlier this morning. It's the uh, basics, uh, the kind of basics of Vista, uh, how to start a show, get some fixtures patched, make some things happen. Um, we're not going to go too terribly in depth in a lot of the stuff. I'm going to try to keep it simple. Uh, we are going to have more webinars later on in the future that go more in depth on some of these items that we're going to cover. So uh, any questions, feel free to type, type in the chat box. We'll try to answer some as we go or at the end. Uh, again, I'm going to try to keep it simple so we won't go too far into if you get into advanced questions, uh, we might not answer those. So um, let's get started. So first thing on Vista is this is this is the screen you'll see when you create a new show in Vista. Um, just for everyone's re reference, when you go file a new show, you get a window that pops open and asks you wanna, if you want to create a new show and name it and whatnot. So this is where I am right now. So we start in our patch screen. And I'm going to go through the six different screens of Vista briefly here to show you what's in what. The first one is the patch screen here, and this is where we find our navigation. Second one is a virtual console screen. When you create a new show in Vista without a console connected, a physical console connected, it will automatically create a virtual EX console. It just gives you a place where you can put some things and stuff like that. If you need to create more consoles, you can do that with the console menu. Or if you have something connected, you'll see it here. Also, it's important to note that when you have a console connected, this logo around the Vista here will actually light up. The circle will become red, so you can physically see that something is connected to that. Along with when you move a fader, the fader will go up and down. The next screen is the fixture chooser. When we patch fixtures, they'll show up in here. As obviously, right now, there's nothing there. Then we have our timeline screen, which will show what happens in queues. Next is the playback screen. Any queue list will show up here, along with all the, the queues in those queue lists. And finally, for those of you that, that might have noticed, there's a new screen here. We're showing a, uh, a beta of the R3 release. And in this new screen, there's a window called the user, uh, user assignable window, user configurable window, which lets us add different things. It works just like the external windows. So you can make this kind of lay this out to however you want it to see, or wherever you want to see. So first off, we'll start in a patch. So the first thing we have to do, obviously, is patch some fixtures to make something happen. Uh, there are a couple different ways to patch. Uh, across the top of the screen are the different universes in Vista, and we'll patch these to, to different universes here and then assign them to the outputs. So our first thing is, on the right-hand side, is the, the library of all the fixtures. If I open up this library, you can see there are a ton of fixtures in here now. Everyone and their brother makes a fixture, and it gets a little, little crazy to go through, and if you were to try to find the manufacturer and dial down, it would be a little difficult. So. We have a handy search box here, which works really well for finding a fixture. So to start off, I'm going to patch a, uh, a, a Robin LED. And as I start typing in, you can see that it starts filtering down into the certain fixtures. The more I type in, uh, the better it will become. So in this case, I'm going to do a wash. And I'm going to say 1,200. And now it's got me just down to the LED washes and the different modes of that. So in this case, I just want the mode one. So I'm gonna select that. The first way I'm gonna patch is by entering the quantity down here at the bottom. So in this case, I wanna do 10. If I wanted to change the label of it, I could do that here. And this is just what the user wants to say. So if I said, this is LED wash. Now when I put patches in there, these fixtures will be called that. Fixture number, again, a user assignable number, doesn't matter what you wanna have there. And multi-patch is for patching multiple copies of this to be controlled by the same one. We'll get into that in a little bit. The bottom part of the window, we can decide to do something with if or with not, without, if we don't. Uh, DMX universe, address. And you can see if I slip, select a different universe, it changes the universe down here as well. So we don't need to do these. And finally, the spacing. The spacing goes by the spacing of the channel. So in this release of Vista, we have a a number here next to the fixture profile that says how many channels that is. So that's handy to see if you're looking for a certain mode and you don't know maybe what it's called, but you know how many channels it is, you can go by that number as well. So for now I have uh, this fixture selected. I have 10 copies of it. I made a name and I can hit the patch button. And when I do that, it automatically drops in 
all 10 of them, run one right after the other. It's named it LED wash, and obviously with the, uh, the fixture number in here. So if I want to patch another set of fixtures, in this case, I have used 450 channels. So, you know, I'm a little full on this universe. So I'm going to go to my next universe. I'm going to decide to patch something else. So one of my favorite fixtures to search for is the Mac Viper. Uh, it's very easy because there are very few fixtures. It's called Viper. So I just type in Viper. And notice that I don't have to type in exactly how it's here, how it's, how it's done. I can type in whichever word I want and we'll find it. So in this case, I'm going to say I'm doing the Viper Profile 16-bit. Again, I'm going to do 10, and I'll change the name. Now this time, I'm not going to use the patch button. Instead, I'm just going to, because I set the quantity, I'm going to drag these out into the patch screen. And by doing that, it brings out all 10 of them. This also lets me move them around. If for some reason they didn't get addressed properly, I can drop them, move them, drop them where I want them. Uh, and when I bring them outside, it's going to say, like, for example, here, there's more, I'm moving more than there are physical space in the universe, so it won't let me do that. Or if I wanted to move them between universes, I could hold them over another universe tab, and it would change it to universe three, universe two. So next up, I'm going to patch another set of fixtures. I'm going to go back to Robin. Robin point. So again, all I've typed in is the, the Robin points, and I can see the different ones here. So in this case, I'm going to use these, mode one, do 10 of them again, and let's just say, for fun, I'm going to change the fixture number to a different number, and I'm going to leave that as is. Again, if I hit patch, it's going to put them right in the next available channel. So if I wanted to leave a space, I could do that. Uh, I could set the start address to a different different spot here. But in this case, I want to just keep everything right together. Final fixture I'm going to patch are just a generic dimmer. But again, I type in dimmer in the search box. So a lot of fixtures in the factory library have dimmer in the name. So I might not need that. So I'm going to collapse the factory library. And I'm going to go to just the generic library. So the generic library is handy for uh, any fixtures that are um, generic for lack of a better term, but also can be used with different things. Like say RGB LED. If I just do RGB, you can see LED has lots of different versions. So if you have a fixture that might not have an exact profile in Vista, especially for an LED like this, you can go through this generic library and find many different layouts of what we're going on, of, of different ways of, of controlling an RG LED. So let me go back to my dimmer. So again, I'm going to patch 18 of these this time, and I will patch these, I'm going to say 901. I like big blocks of space between line and fixture numbers. And I'll say patch, and there are my 18 dimmers. Now, if I wanted to do, say, a theatrical style patch or a theatrical style show where I don't want as many, or I want one control, one fixture in the, in the uh, fixture chooser to control multiple DMX channels, I could set that multi-patch to a number here. And when I do that, it's going to give me five copies, basically, of that fixture. Now, these are all going to be controlled as one fixture, but it's going to be five different addresses. So in this case, we'll see right here, this is the one I just did. So it's a single fixture here, but it's five addresses here. So I'm going to undo that a couple of times. One of the nice things in Vista is control Z undo undoes anything. Uh, so if you do anything that you don't like, you can always go back through and undo it. All right, so now we have some fixtures patched. Uh, I'll just go through a couple of the, the little things on this screen as well. Uh, handy to look at as we're working across the top here. So our default view of the patch screen is a table view. There's also a list view. The list view has a search box, which makes it easy to say, if I'm looking for just the Vipers, I can search down and see where they are there. The other view is the DMX view. This is going to show me the output of what's ha actually happening on each universe at this time. 
And because these are moving lights, they have a default location for stuff. So your pan and tilt are halfway, 128, 128. Dimmers obviously have nothing. Strike, dows, and reset. These are commands in the fixtures to turn on and off the lamp in a discharge fixture. Uh, so turn it on or turn it off. Uh, and reset is another command to reset the mechanicals of the fixture. Over here on the right-hand side of the screen is probably one of the most, most important parts of the Vista patch screen, the Connect Universes button. This is how we tell Vista to output the data from this universe tab to a port on a console. So right now I don't have a console connected, but I have that virtual EX. So it's going to show me two ports here, port one and port two. Again, it's not connected, so I don't see that. Over here in Vista Universe, this is where I have to assign it. So right now, no data from Vista is, would be going out to, to anything. So here is where I would say I'm going to make Vista Universe 1, Vista Universe 2. So now, if this console was connected, I'd be outputting my Vista Universe 1 on port 1 and my Vista Universe 2 on port 2. If you didn't have, say you only had one universe, you could actually output both, both Vista Universes to these, or both Console universes could output the same Vista universe. And there's a new column in this build for uh, output enabled. This applies to network data. Again, that's something else we'll get into later on. So just, I'm just gonna change that back to two. Say okay. So that basically shows us what we do in a patch screen. So now we've got some fixtures patched. Uh, also here, I'll just touch on real quick. At the bottom of the screen is called the fixture pool. It's an area where we can put fixtures that are, uh, we don't want to, let's say we want to change a fixture or we don't need the fixture at this time. If I put it in the pool, it's unpatched from the show, but all the data related to that fixture remains. So we don't lose any of the programming. So then if we decide to put it back, we can, we can do that. All right, so moving on, fixture cons console view and then fixture chooser. So the third button over here. This is where we control our fixtures, make our layouts, kind of get things set up the way we want to see them. So in this case, uh, you know, this would kind of drive me crazy. I don't really want to see it like this. So I'm going to drag and drop some fixtures around and remove some stuff here. things like the dimmers. Uh, at the bottom of this window, we've got some zoom options to zoom in and out. If you click on the plus and minus and hold, you can, you can drag it kind of up and down. There's also a zoom to selection, which is really handy when you're going into just certain dimmers like this or just certain fixtures. And also the 100% to zoom to everything. What I'm working in right now is called our layout. So this is our layout one. Uh, you can have multiple layouts in Vista, depending on what you want to see in each layout. So, for example, right now, here I see everything that I have. Um, but if I went in a layout that is just my dimmers, I could create a new one. So, other couple ways of doing this. One is right-clicking in here, going to Layouts, and say New Layout or Duplicate Layout. There's also the Manage Layouts window. If I open up the Manage Layouts window, it's going to show me the different layouts that I have. So, right now, I only have this one. If I wanted to add a new one, I could hit the plus icon here. And it by default adds all my fixtures into that layout. And it's kind of a mess here too. So in this case, I'd want to go into my layout too, and I'm going to remove everything, even the groups, and just show my dimmers here. Um, I can drill it down to even showing individual things. And if I decide I, oops, I, you know, I wanted to keep something, I can reselect it here. So when you remove, remove things from a layout, they're not gone, they're just being hidden. Also some other options in here that and I'm going to check one of these. Uh, fixture show intensity values, so we can see that a little better. All right, so let's say I'm in this layout and I wanna kind of rearrange this stuff. So I'm gonna take the first six here and throw them over here. I'm gonna take these, like this, these like this. And all of this is basically user pre preference. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It all depends on how you want to program, which is the beauty of the multiple layouts that you, each operator could have their own layout depending on what they want to see or how they want to program. There's also some tools in here for arranging the fixtures. So if I take those six 
and I right click in here and I can say arrange an arc, arrange in circle, arrange in grid, also align, distribute, flip. A uh, lot of tools that are probably ba probably sort of standard with other programs if you're if you know what you're you're looking at here. Um, arranging grid is probably the one I'll use the most where I can then adjust these and put them in the way I want. So if I said I want two rows and three columns, it's going to give me that nice little block of fixtures like that. So again, I'll do that over on this one. And this one. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating three groups of fixtures and I'm going to basically put these fixtures as different colors. So let's say these are all my red fixtures. So I can do a couple things here. So one of them is in my right click menu under items, I can change my icon color. So let's say I want these to be red fixtures, but I want to be able to see them visually that they're red every time. So if I change the icon color, it's going to show me the perimeter of the icon and what that is all the time. Same thing with these. I'll make these blue, blueish, and I can make these amber. This is a visual way of doing this. Now I could do this any other way. I could rename them to whatever I want them to be. Um, lots of ways of doing what I'm what I'm doing here. So this is a quick and easy way of doing it. Uh, so now let's say I want to create. We're gonna kind of go in here and while we're still laying out everything, we're gonna create some new groups. So this is gonna be, we're gonna skip around a little bit here on this just because I wanna do everything in this window and be ready to go and program. So right now, uh, if I select these fixtures, I can create groups in multiple ways. At the bottom of the screen, we've got what's called the multi quick picker. It's a place where we can throw different components, different items that we wanna use. Uh, by default, we've got one that's groups and it Vista creates automatic groups for the, the main batches of fixtures. In this case, I want to separate this out and do a, a different group for each one of these uh, sections of dimmers here. So I could do this a couple ways. One, I could come in here, right click and say new group. Uh, I can also in the let fixture chooser, right click in an area, say fixture groups and say create new fixture group. What I like about doing this in the fixture chooser, geez, rad, red, how about that? Uh, what I like about doing this in the fixture chooser is where I right click, it creates the group. When I do it down here, it sticks the group, you know, somewhere else in there. So I like to always say, hey, this is exactly where I would make my group icon. Uh, and that's what I do. And obviously, as I'm doing this, you can see this is populating with these other groups. So now I have these groups. Uh, I'm basically got my layout set up. This is my dimmers layout. Uh, if I wanted to go in here and manage this, I could change the name. And now I have these tabs. Uh, you can do multiple layouts, lots of layouts. I don't, I don't think we've come across the limit. You get to the point where you have too many, so you want to kind of make sure you know what you're doing with the layouts and you don't get too crazy with it. Um, but anyway, you're very, you got a lot of flexibility. So now I've got this laid out. I'm going to start with just showing uh, what happens when we select fixtures. So if you've noticed, as I've selected fixtures, things over here on the right-hand side, called this is called the sidebar, uh, different options sort of light up and, and go away as I go. So right now I've got dimmer selected. So I have the option to give it intensity. Below that, there's position and color and other things, but these fixtures don't have that, so all I can do is intensity. If I go back over to my original layout, and you can see it added these other group icons in here too. So I could put these, move these around, and again, I could turn this on and off in the layout's preferences. But if I select a set of fixtures that are moving lights, you can see I have access to a lot more parameters. So in the sidebar here, we've got these different feature tabs. Our first one is the all features tab. It's uh, basically a summary of everything the fixture can do. So here's where I have uh, my intensity, I have my position, color, gobos, uh, gobos, uh, go, gobo spin, focus, zoom, iris, all this stuff. It's just a quick way of getting to something if you're gonna go right through something quickly. 
If I need to drill deeper into the fixtures, into what they can do, across the top we have the different features uh, panes. So in this case, here's intensity. So in intensity, I have uh, access to my shutter and my strobe. Position, we have access to the same position, but we have flip and fine. So if I turn on fine, as I move this, it's gonna move very slowly. Flip is something with moving heads that it will take it to the other side of its uh, DMX values to do that. Color, I have access to the color picker again, but also HSV and CMY ways of mixing and RGB, depending if I wanna see it a different way. Also in a fixture it has, that has a color wheel, I have access to the color wheel and it shows me where the fixture, the, the color slots are on the wheel. So if I want to create a color, some sort of color bump between two that are next to each other, I can see here physically where they are. Gobo, same thing with gobo. It's going to show me physically on the wheel where each of the gobos are and each of the gobo wheels. So in here, we've got our first wheel, second wheel, third wheel. In this case, this is an animation wheel. And then fourth is a prism. Uh, the prisms in Vista are considered gobos, so it lets us put them in and take them out. Another thing that's interesting to note here too, as we do this, you can see in here, we have some visualization of what's happening with the gobos. And also if I put a rotation value on a gobo, it will show me here that it's rotating as well. It doesn't show you in the fixture chooser, but it will show you in the, in the features. And obviously when I, see, when I start a gobo, because the spin can go either way, it's gonna start at this halfway point and let me go forwards or backwards. Finally, we have our beam, actually not finally, but our next one, next generic uh, pro, uh, parameter is the beam parameter. So if we had framing shutters, I'd see it here where I could adjust these in and out. For focus, we've got the sliders for focus and zoom and, and iris. Uh, a lot of that stuff we're not gonna see in the fixture chooser, uh, but we can tell kind of here where we're at. And finally is the custom features. This is for things that might not fit uh, in the generic model. Uh, every tab here has had these same custom features in the bottom. These are basically the raw DMX values. Uh, so as I'm going through things like the color mixing, you can see these values change here. Things that don't fit into this generic model uh, would be down here, for example, CTO in this one, which is a color correction. If I needed to adjust that, I have to roll that in manually right here. So all of these are also found in custom under intensity and position color. Uh, things like the control channels are found in the miscellaneous ones. You don't necessarily need to get into this that often, except for maybe a, a control channel uh, option. Uh, we, it's best to stay out of using these custom parameters at all, because when you do this, you kind of lose the, the benefit of it being a generic color in Vista or a generic mod using the generic model. And with that, I'll show you more about why that isn't so important. So I'm gonna clear everything. So some of what I'm meaning about with the generic model is when I'm grabbing fixtures in here and I'm turning them on and giving them a color, I'm just saying, hey, I want these fixtures, I want them in red. I don't really care how they're getting to the red. Uh, Vista's figuring that out in the background for me. So with this, being able to do this type of thing, I can do fun stuff like copy and paste between different fixture types. So in this example, if I use, I'm on a Windows machine, I'm using a Windows keyboard, so I can use the, the standard Windows commands, control C, control V. Uh, on a Mac, you can use command C, command V. So if I say control C right now, I just copy these parameters from here, and I'm gonna select these lights, and I'm gonna say control V. And I can paste all this on here. The difference here is that these have color mixing, and these are color wheel. I don't need to know that. Vista does that automatically. Because I'm programming in the generic model here, I'm just saying take it to red and you know, you figure out how to get me to red. So here, if I look at it, here's my color wheel for these, ro these robins and it's taking me to the red slot right here. So it's another reason why you want to try to stay in the generic model as much as possible because it allows you to do those types of things. All right, am I going too fast for anyone? I'm, I'm kind of trying to get through things quickly. So if we uh, 
I'm going to just take a, a moment here to do something else because my OCD drives me crazy when these are like this. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I just want to get them straightened out. So part of the reason for showing this is after you get your fixture layouts, after you get all this set up the way you want it, um, because of the way, because of how easy it is to move things around, it's also very easy to accidentally move things around. So one thing I always like to do is once I get everything laid out, there's this button right here that says locked, unlocked. When I click on it, it means now the fixtures are not gonna move if I try to drag them by accident. So something important to have, hit that locked, it'll save your sanity. You don't worry about dragging stuff around all the time. Before you move on, Ben, just a quick question. Yes. Uh, yeah. How can I see the multi-quick picker and how can you do a quick clear? So the multi-quick picker by default will show up at the bottom of the screen. If for some reason it goes away, in the view menu, we go to add dockable window and we can select the multi-quick picker. This is a dockable item, so we can put it you know, either side of the screen, top, bottom, all over the place. You also have access to other quick pickers. So if I decided I didn't want the multi quick picker, I could add a regular quick picker if I choose, which would just be a single one of these. As for clearing, everything I've been doing is in the is happening in live right now. So when I select something and I bring it up, you see next to the word live, we have this little circle with the line through it. And also the clear button sort of highlights a little bit here. Uh, this is important to note because if you do something in live, it overrides any other things you do. If you're in a queue list or something else, it's going to override that. Live has the highest priority. Prior, yeah. So I can either hit clear here. I could also click on the little icon next to the live in the tab. And also these soft keys at the top correspond to your F keys on your keyboard. So this one would be F6 as well. All right, so in the multi-quick picker, show a couple quick little things down here. So the multi-quick picker, uh, again, lets you put things that you'd like in here. Uh, we're not gonna go into all this stuff. I'm gonna just briefly touch on presets here on this. Uh, a preset in Vista is like, can be called a palette on other consoles. It's, a, it's something that you wanna use over and over in your show. So let's say I have these fixtures and I have them in red or I've spent a lot of time mixing this very particular shade of blue that I want to use. And I want to save that and be able to use that over and over again without having to copy and paste it. I can save that in the presets window down here. So right now I'm set to presets. I'm set to all. If I were to record this right now, I could right click in here and say create new preset. And what would happen is if I had also had moved the, the, the pan or tilt or anything else, I'd also have the option to save that in this preset. In this case, because I haven't touched anything else, it's only going to save the color. So I'm going to say something that's cool blue. It's going to be a global value, means I can apply this blue to any fixture, provided the fixture can produce it. Uh, the rest of these options you can leave as is. Just make sure your features is selected so you're just doing the color. And when I say OK, I now have this cool blue preset down here which then I can apply to the other fixtures. Again, these being color wheel, I might not get the exact shade, but this is gonna work as hard as it can to get as close as it can based on what it knows the fixture has in it. And these presets can be done for all of the, of the other parameters. I could do position, gobo, beam, and, and other things as well. Again, these are great for programming and getting things going, uh, keeping something that you wanna use all the time, especially in, in positions. If you have set up your different spot positions for center stage or stage right, stage right, um, this, is, this is where you'd set those positions. All right. So now that we know how to do a little bit of, of controlling things in live, we need to now save some actual cues uh, in order to run this stuff. There are a couple different ways of creating cues in Vista. Uh, the first one is, is kind of the, this is, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is the sledgehammer approach. Uh, this is the store all function right here. So in the store all function, it basically is going to take anything I've been doing and it's going to store it to a location. So before I start, I'm going to go over here 
I'm going to add a MV console. And then I'm going to drag this off so it's not docked and it's just floating around here. All right, here we are. So now here's just a virtual MV console. I'm using this because I don't have a physical one. If I had a physical one, I'd do that rather than this. And I'm going to take some lights. Actually, I'm going to change over to dimmers. I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to start here. I'm going to take these dimmers and I'm going to turn them on. Doing this in live. All right, great. There's my look. I like that. So let's do this. I'm going to hit store all. What store all is going to do is it's going to grab everything that's outputting on stage right now. So anything, comp com anything uh, contributing to the look on the stage is going to get sucked in and stored to a location that I choose. When I open the store all window, I have, it's going to say, where do I want this to go? And this is where I can also label what this is. So I want to say this is the store all. So my queue list is now called store all. I'll leave the queue name as is. And I can select my location of where I want the physical playback to be. So if I hit the select button there and say, okay, now what's happened is that look that I just stored has now been put on this playback right here. The other thing to notice is that it's also cleared live for me automatically. This queue list is active. It's not in live, it's actually playing back. So it lets me go on and create another, another queue if I want to. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these on, or actually, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to select them. I'm going to physically turn them off in the live tab. I'm going to turn the next ones on. And again, I'm going to say store all again. It's going to default to the last queue list I just was working on, so I don't have to add anything else. I can just say store all. It's going to be Q2 and say OK. And there we go. I'm on my way. I'm going to create one more queue, take those off, take these on. This time I'm going to hit store all again, and I'm going to change the timing on this. So let's say I want these, to, the blue lights to go down a longer time. I can use these bars here to drag that timing out. So now in this case, my up is going to be in two seconds and my down is going to be in four seconds. Same thing, next queue. I see a timing of split here, a two second, four second. And now there's my Q3. So if I play my Q1, my Q2, then my Q3, you can see that these are still fading out as those keep going. So you can do some quick programming right there. Uh, you don't get too intricate in the timing when you do a store all, but it's a way of getting your looks, your looks in there quickly uh, without opening the queue list for editing. And with that in mind, I am going to open this queue list. Actually, I'm going to do another queue list. I'm going to release that one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create another, a new queue list in another way. So store all is great if you started working on something. I personally like it when I've started working on something in live and then I get to and make this awesome look and I say, oh, I want to put that in a queue list. Um, and I can do that quickly. In normal situations, when I want to create a new queue list, I'm going to use the new button up at the top here. So this is going to open up a new tab at the top of the screen and it's going to give me this new queue list. When I do it this way, I'm not storing the queues at one by one. I'm actually creating the queue first and I'm making the look that I want and it's being put in that queue list right away, in that queue right away, and at the end, I'll save the entire queue list. So for right now, I've created this first queue, and I'm going to switch over to, I'm going to play some moving lights now. I'm going to grab these, zoom in here a little bit. I'm just going to play with the vipers. Oops. All right. So in this queue, I know what I want to do. I know this is going to be my queue list. This is my show. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on these vipers and I'm going to put them in a position. So something else is kind of important to notice, I don't know if, if anyone's noticed, but when I go into position, because I don't have a console with encoders, the all tab is great for everything else, except for position usually, because it's kind of hard to do that position in here, because there aren't those scroll bars on the slot on the side. So that's why I go into the position palette here, because it lets me just take and just move the tilt rather than moving both a pan and tilt kind of freely. So anyway, as I've done all, that, all of that, it's being stored in that queue right now. So there's nothing more I have to do. 
uh, when I'm done with the look that I want, I hit this plus icon here, and it's going to insert a new queue after the selected queue. So now I'm in my second queue. And in this queue, let's say I'm going to kick them all to red. And I'm going to do another queue, and we're going to tilt them this way. And I'll change them to that, to lav, and one more queue, and I'm going to turn them off. So just like that, I've created four queues. If I use these transport controls at the top here, I can go back to the beginning, and I play through. There's my first queue. They're coming on. And they're changing color, moving again. Everything is currently happening in two seconds. This is the default time in Vista. It can be changed in the user preferences. Uh, but this is, what it's, this is what they all are going to default to right now. If I want to change any of that stuff, I could say I could select that time field and maybe make it four seconds by typing in four. And that's going to affect the overall queue time. Now, let's say I want to get into these queues a little bit more and do some other uh, fun things with, with the fixtures. That's where our timeline screen comes into play. When I go to our timeline window, I can see everything that happens in those queues in a linear fashion. So all the way back to the beginning, I play through this one. There my lights are coming up and positions moving. Play the next one. Colors coming in. All this stuff, as this cursor moves across, I can see what it's happening. If I wanted to do something where I have a split time on, some, on a queue, say for example this one, I could drag this position. I could click on that, select that position, and drag it out and actually offset it. So now my intensity would happen first and my position would happen next. So they come on and then they're moving. If I want to get deeper in that, and as I did that, the timing stayed the same. So each section was still two seconds. It made the overall queue longer to four seconds. I can also adjust the overall queue time with this gray handle here. Let's me expand and contract the, the queues. As I do that, the stuff scales proportionally. So if I pull it out to six seconds or eight seconds, that's now four seconds and four seconds. If I want to get even deeper into the control of, of what fixtures are doing what at what time, I can click these plus icons here to expand these tracks. And now I can see this is the 10 fixtures changing from, from whatever they were in previous queues, which was nothing, to the color red. When I select all those events, I get these grab boxes around here. And these let us do some other little fun things with this. For example, if I grab the center one in the back, I can shorten this up. Now this just shortened up the events. It doesn't shorten up the queue. But it allows me to do things where when I shorten them up to that and I grab the center bottom one, I can skew that. So now over this two seconds or the four seconds here, this color will wave down through the fixtures. Going back over here. And you see there's a quick, what might take a little time to do on other consoles or other ways of doing it. It's very simple and very visual to do in Vista. There are other options here. Now, again, if I have this, if I have this skewed out like this and I use uh, the boxes, it's actually going to skew the whole thing or, or shorten the whole time, the whole, all of it in its same proportion. So I'm going to control Z back a bit and undo those. Uh, something else we can do in here too is if I shorten this up again, let me take it back to one second. We have the fan options up here. We're going to have a whole another webinar on all of this fun stuff that we have up here, but for now, I'm just going to go through this real quickly and kind of briefly on this. Our fan options, our linear fan is default. When I have that selected, if I hold my control key or the yellow modifier, it creates a different box here. If I grab this center bar of this uh, frame, I can actually create some interesting skews with the uh, when I'm moving that around. So example, if I want to go fan from center and I hold this, it's actually going to let me fan these fixtures out in an interesting way. Maybe. It's not allowing me to do that right now. Well, that's no fun. Jack, do you have any thoughts on that one? <laughs> Jack, 
change your fan type back to fan from center again. Huh. Try nudging it in a bit. Try what? Nudge it off zero. Sorry, say again? Make it start at, say, half a second and just see if it... Take it off the zero edge. T the delay time. Gotcha. Yep, hold on a sec. There we go. That's a very interesting one. We'll have to take a look at that one. Uh, but yeah, so we can do, if I hold that down, I can fan that stuff out like that. So now I'm going to go back. Again, Control-Z. I really like doing Control-Z, especially when you're in a queue list, because it allows you to experiment with things. And if you don't like it, you can undo it and try it a different way. Um, so yeah, so control undoing and redoing is, is quite handy. And I have run shows doing undo by setting up a look and then undoing it over and over again. Uh, it can be interesting. Just to comment about that one there, but it's not a bug because I'm just testing it in my version it, and it does work as you'd expect. So okay. maybe something that you're in there. So I must have done something screwy here. <laughs> See, there it sort of worked. Huh. Okay. Anyway, uh, so moving on. Yeah, so in the timeline, we can do lots of fun things uh, with, with seeing how things go, uh, along with you know moving single parameters around uh, and adjusting things like that. So if I wanted to do something very custom, uh, I could. So now I've done all this stuff in a timeline, or done this stuff in these queues. Again, everything's being saved in the queues as I go. Uh, if When I'm all done here, I want to close out the li this list. So this is open for editing. And it's possible to have multiple lists open for editing at the same time. Uh, the danger in that is you'd be cycling through different lists a lot of times, making adjustments, and it's easy to get yourself lost and, and make an adjustment to something you don't mean to. And also, when it's open for editing, anything you do is being saved. So if I'm sitting here in this queue or in another queue and I say, uh, oh, yeah, you know, this, this light I need to change, I want to change that there, um, that's saved. It's, it's there. It's in that queue now right away. And I can see it right here. So having a list open for editing can be dangerous uh, for the run of the show. So at the end, I usually I recommend closing the lists and running them from the console or running them from another, another method. In this case, if I hit, hit the close, it's going to ask me if I want to save this. That's where I can name it. And if I say save and release, there it is. It's saved. It's somewhere. It's in the show file right here, but it's not assigned to a playback right now. If I want to put it on a playback, in the console screen, we go to our, our console screen and we go to our queue list over on this side, so our drop down for here, and I can click on it, I can drag it and drop it on a playback. I can put the same list on multiple playbacks, so don't feel like that if you put it on one, you can't have it somewhere else. It's, uh, it's kind of flexible, lets it go. You could have it on every playback if you really wanted to. And now I can play my list through right here. So now let's say we want to open this and edit it after we've done all this. Uh, this. This button in previous versions, it was called open. It's now been changed to edit. It's the same exact thing, same position in here as well. If I click on edit, it's going to ask me which queue list do I want to edit. In this case, I'm going to open up the one I just did, the list. And because it was already active, it's it put me in Q3. Uh, when I select through different queues here, some things change. I get this yellow box around here, and this button changes the queue view. What this means is that I am now looking at Q1 in the programmer right here, but it's not actually active on stage. Q3 is active on stage. This lets me go through and change things. Let's say, um, let's go back a couple queues and turn off queue view for a minute. And I'm sitting in here, I'm gonna sit in Q1 and I'm thinking, oh, did I make that change in Q4 that I meant to make? If I select Q4 while I'm in here in editing, it's automatically gonna kick into Q view. It allows me to look at that queue and I can say, oh yeah, you know what, these fixtures, I meant to have this fixture and this fixture stay on in this queue. The changes I'm making are for Q, Q4, but Q1 is still playing on stage. So now if I go back and start playing through things, or if I turn off QView and start playing through things, I'm going to skip through fast. Uh, now I get to Q4, and that change that I made leaving those two lights on is there. 
The inverse to this is the link button here. What link button does is now whatever queue I select is automatically going to be live on stage. So if I select Q1, boom, it's going to go to Q1, Q3, Q2. And this is happening as quickly as I'm going through things. So this is a great way of going through if you're, uh, when you're programming and you want to bounce through your looks to see what's happening. Uh, it makes it really easy, but it's something that doesn't come on by default because normally we want to make sure that you're not doing something you mean that you didn't mean to be doing. And there's lots of uh, notices here to tell you that you're looking at something else, uh, which is handy because it is easy again when queue view is on, it's easy to make a change to another queue that you didn't mean to make, you meant to make that change in the queue you're currently in. So again, once I'm done with all this stuff, I can say close and any changes I'm making, it will ask me if I want to save. Uh, again, I can save it. If I just click on save here, it's going to remain running. So I'll still be sitting in Q1. If I say save and release, it's going to release that from, from playback right now. Uh, again, it's important to note that, get to my MV here again real quick. I can have multiple queue lists running. When they are running, even if I were to turn the fader down, depending on how you store the queue list, it's still running. So you need to release it in order to remove it from the show, uh, get, or remove it from, from active playback. Uh, again, another thing is this queue list is running right now. Actually, I'm gonna release everything first because I wanna really show how this works. If I grab these fixtures, and let's say I was playing here in live and I was checking something and I turned them off, and uh, now I go and play this queue and nothing's happening. Uh, well, I mean, position's still happening because I haven't touched position, but the light's not coming on when it should be coming on. It's because I still have it captured in live. So I got to make sure I clear that out. And now I see the light coming back out. So that's one of the big things that you always have to check. If for some reason your queue lists are not playing the way you think they should be playing, make sure that you do not have them uh, in live, don't have them captured or anything like that. All right. Any uh, any questions in there, Jack? I don't believe so. Okay. Let's see, nothing. Okay. So I'm going through things kind of quickly because uh, I want to hit a couple other little other little things that we haven't really spent a lot of time on, and I'm going to touch again. I'm going to touch on them briefly because we are going to go through them in another webinar at some point. Um, but there are some other little tricks, especially for people who you know, may have very simple shows um, and they only use three cues um, or they only use three looks, but they want to have multiple cues. So when I have a cue list open for editing, I can copy and paste entire cues quite easily. Again, if I use uh, the shortcut keys, something that's changed in Vista 3 versus Vista 2, if we're having another Vista 2 users is now we have copy and cut cues are their own shortcut. They used to be control C with the same as the regular copy and paste, but now they're a new one. Control Shift C, Control Shift X. So I can take a queue, Control Shift C, and I can paste a queue still with Control V, and it's gonna paste that look to that new queue. I can also click on a queue, and if I hold the click and drag it and drop it, it'll let me create a copy of that queue in other places. So if you had three queues, like let's say uh, stage, video and these aren't going to correspond with anything that's actually in the queue. For a simple corporate, corporate gig, you've got your stage look, your video look, and your blackout. That's pretty much your entire show. If I want to keep using that over and over again, I could click on that, paste, just drag and drop over and over again. Oh, now I'm going to go to video. Now we're going back to the stage um, and then blackout. So I could create these cues just by clicking on them and dragging them. So some quick things uh, for that. Again, we're going to get more into this later on in another webinar because there's a lot more other tricks you can do in here. Uh, but that's kind of a little, little bit of a taste. I'll show you what you can do so far. All right. So that uh, 
that pretty much gets us through the basics of this. Uh, I would love to open this up to questions at this point, if there's anything anyone would like to know to see. Uh, just a quick question. Can you loop a queue? You can loop a queue. Let me open that up again. Uh, so in a queue, you can set up a queue property to loop a queue. Um, uh, hesitant to get too far into this because this is something we are going to get into later on. Uh, but in a queue property, there is a loop where I can have that queue uh, continue to loop around, uh, loop back to itself. Uh, also, we can turn a queue list into a chase, and then you can turn it into a, a, a follow queue as well. Again, there's a lot in in queues and queue properties, things like that. At queue list properties that we're gonna we we have actually have a have scheduled a webinar devoted to nothing but properties. So um, there'll be all kinds of things in that one. All right. Any other questions? Last question, I'll read it out loud. When in a list and you edit fixtures in Q2 of 10, does this change that fixture in all of the other queues or just that one? Um, I'll answer it straight away. It tracks yeah. through when working in the live edit. Um, and actually, our webinar tomorrow is going to be all about tracking and, and tools that manage it. So the webinar tomorrow at the same time is going to be talking all about that tracking. Yes, that's... Uh... That's a great question because, yeah, tracking is a whole other beast. Uh, it's the way a lot of consoles do work in tracking, um, and it, it does require it, – it, it's its own webinar. It's got uh, lots to lots to learn about tracking, and there are lots of different tools in Vista on how to uh, track things, stop tracking things, and, and do exactly uh, where I just want to change a single queue. So. And uh, Dustin, your question about HTTP and LTP options, we'll be covering that in uh... – I lost you, Jack. Am I back? Oh, there you are. Hey, you're back. Because <laughs> I changed the application. Um, yeah, we'll be covering that probably in the Qlist Properties uh, webinar because HTTP is a Qlist property that you turn on. And I think that is going to be scheduled um, probably on Wednesday, the 29th of April because we've got a full schedule coming up of all the stuff we need to... Uh, talk about. Um, question Ben, how do you add more fixtures in the show that you're creating and how can you access presets after you create them? So if you want to add at any time you can just patch more fixtures in the show. So if I said I wanted to add more Vipers I could go ahead and, and bring them in here. Uh, we're going to do more on, on cloning fixtures and other things like that. Um, but yeah you can add fixtures and as you add fixtures they're going to show up in the bottom of your fixture chooser there's also a preference in the layouts to uh, either auto show new fixtures or not. So if I didn't want them to always show up in the layout I'm working on, I could turn that off. And they would, so they would be in there. Uh, if I wanted to add them into the queues, I'd have to reprogram the queues. Uh, multiple queue lists. So your queue lists, you'll see them on your console surface. That's also where the playback screen comes in handy. In the playback screen, now that I have some queue lists in here, we can see what happens. I have two different queue lists in here, and I can see all the queues in each queue list. I can also see where they are. So in this case, if I were to play this queue list, and I can play them from this screen, if you couldn't tell, um, I can actually play any queue that I want from this screen, which is very helpful uh, in live events if you want to bounce through things. But now I can see you know, which queue list is playing and where, which queue of, the, of these queue lists is playing. It also shows me if I expand this out, I can see that it's in current, what current queue it's in. Uh, yes, there is a way, there is a way to take a queue list to play uh, in the multi quick pickers where I have these queue lists, I can change uh, the parameter to select the play and select the re release. So yeah, I could, I could set that up. Um, Personally, I'm 
not a fan of doing it in here because it's easy to accidentally play something. Um, but yeah, it's certainly possible, especially if you're using an external monitor with a touch screen and you want to have lots of cue lists running uh, or lots of different things going. Uh, I see something else about accessing presets. Yeah, so a preset, if I have a preset set up, uh, what's really nice about Vista is I can, I can edit these presets just like I can edit pretty much anything else. If I were to right click on this preset and say edit, it's going to open that preset up in its ta tab here and show me exactly what's in it. Now in a preset, pay no attention to the fact that it says two seconds. Presets don't contain any time. That's an extract and that's something else we'll do later. Um, but here I can see exactly what's in there. So if I decided I wanted to tweak that a little bit, I could select it and I could move them around a little bit. Um, I could also go in here and, and do an update on it if I wanted to change it there too. But what I really like about this is I can see exactly what's in this preset because uh, that is something that has bugged me on my previous console experience of creating presets and not being able to know what I did and I did something wrong and now I have no idea what it, how to get it back. It's the same thing about removing fixtures from presets. Yeah, so it, if I didn't want, if I created a, a fixture type preset and I edited it here, I could say and pull out grab those and say delete and they go away. Yeah, again, editing presets is, is quite handy. Uh, and and what I, with that preset, one of the things with that preset, that was a global preset. So it didn't really apply to any fixtures. Uh, it didn't apply to the specific fixtures. It just happened to have them in there because that's what I created them on. Uh, but if I created a preset that was a position preset or a, an actual fixture, specific preset, I could pop them out of that. All right, anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, and as Jack said, we're gonna be doing some some other webinars uh, on different types of playback situations, mm -hmm. whether it's theatrical or uh, house of worship, corporate, or busking, you know, concert. So you can pretty much do it however you'd like to do it with Vista. Yes, we have about eight more webinars uh, planned and scheduled. We should be uh, announcing those topics and dates uh, within the coming days. Yeah, again, this is a that we're this was designed to be as pretty quick overview for anyone who might not know anything about Vista to be able to to simply start a show, uh, patch some lights, make some things happen, you know, and 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 run something quickly. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get more into other options here uh, much later. And we did webinars a couple weeks ago. We This is their second time running the, doing the basic webinars. Uh, last week we did, or the week before we did one that was more advanced. We did got into the, the effects templates a little bit more. Uh, those are available on our YouTube channel. So you can go in there and, and watch those. Um, and updating cues, again, if you edit, if I open it up for editing, anything I'm doing, if I change anything in here, I'm going to turn link on, uh, it's being done in that queue right away as soon as I do it. So uh, there are other update options with this update button. It's a kind of a, that's a rabbit hole. We're not going to go down on this one either. Uh, but yeah, this, this, is, this is the way I prefer to do it anyway, because then I can see exactly what I'm doing at any one time. I know exactly what I've done rather than the blind way of updating and hoping that you put this information in the right queue uh, or did the right thing. So, And yes, we're going to put these on YouTube as well. Um, yeah. So it, 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 will be, it won't be right away, but it will have them up in the next uh, day or two. It should be so. tomorrow, hopefully. It'll be well. Perfect. All right. Well, that pretty much takes care of it for us. Uh, thanks for coming, and uh, we'll uh, um, you know, hopefully see some of you again tomorrow. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, uh, shoot us an email at vista support at chroma q dot com. Um, you know, anything else you find out, or any anything, any ideas you have. So, all right, thanks everybody. <laughs>